TCAP is no stranger to some questionable people. I mean, come on, it's in the name. But the ones we're going over today might just be the most obnoxious people to have ever been featured on the show. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Bodner runs sure. out the door as soon as he sees me. He's running. Starting off with a truly disturbing character, Kevin Westerbeck. And this guy's twisted journey began with a troubling incident that landed him in hot water. Have you? It all started when he ruffled his feathers with his niece back in the day. Yeah, you heard that right. This dude didn't even spare his own family. Fast forward to August 2005, Kevin was caught red-handed when the Fairborn Police Department executed a sting operation that exposed his devious nature for the world to see. The man was trying to solicit someone that was, well, that much should go without saying. Anyway, charges were formally filed against him in October of that year. You'd think that facing legal consequences might have prompted Kevin to do some soul searching. But alas, he didn't learn his lesson. The judge, in a surprisingly lenient move, allowed Kevin a few days to get his affairs in order before beginning his 11-month sentence. But rather than focusing on self-improvement and rehabilitation, Kevin decided to embark on yet another disturbing adventure. Yeah, he tracked down someone else. Kevin, ever the master of deception, lied about his age attempting to pass himself off as much younger than he was. You're not 27, are you? No. But you said you were. Right. So that was a lot. It honestly blows my mind how quickly he got straight to his inappropriate business. Dude got into it in four minutes flat. He even shamelessly boasted about his impressive attributes, revealing the depths of how twisted he really was. One user even goes back to read Kevin's chats with the setup every time they felt even an ounce of sympathy for the people that find themselves featured on the show. That should go to show just how vile the guy really was. Another viewer commented about how the guy lacked basic common sense and empathy for his victims, and I think we can all agree with that. Cut to the day of their meeting, and Kevin's conduct took an even more cringeworthy turn. The person he was meeting with greeted him with her ever-sweet voice, asking him to wait while she prepared herself. But Kevin, with a complete absence of respect and decency, had the audacity to say this. I gotta finish getting changed, Dad. Well, watch it. God, the guys who get caught on this show cross lines as easily as breathing. But this goes to a whole new level. Anyway, once inside the house, Chris stepped in to prevent Kevin from straying further and further into depravity. Chris urged him to take a seat, even recommending a bar stool for better camera angles. When probed about his intentions, Kevin weaved an intricate web of lies, absurdly asserting that the other person had initiated the conversation and invited him over. As if Chris hadn't heard that one a million times before. I was going to go home, and she kept calling and said, please come over, please come over. I said, well, I'll come over just a little bit, and I'm going home. That's it. And Kevin's tangled web of lies continued to unravel as Chris drilled into him about why he downplayed his age. And what was Kevin's excuse? Check this out. Yeah, email crap, or the huh? chat crap. You know, it's a lie. When reminded about his looming prison sentence, he got even more pathetic. I'm s I'm, I'm, s I'm It's just, I'm just. Well, he sure as hell was, but did you catch his sarcasm? All the while, Kevin stubbornly stuck to his laughable story of having no intention to follow through with his plans. But here's the kicker. In yet another bewildering turn, Chris pointed out a mysterious black suitcase in Kevin's car. Kevin quickly concocted another flimsy story, claiming it contained his Bible and some miscellaneous stuff. There's nothing. There's just my date timekeeper, my Bible. Your Bible. Yes. What's more, he also professed his devotion to religion, asserting his faith in God. Chris, rightfully baffled, confronted Kevin about the glaring disconnect between his religious convictions and what he came here to do. 
And what was Kevin's response? He had come over simply because she had called him, conveniently ignoring, well, everything I talked about earlier. And then she called me. I thought, well, I'll just go over there, say hi, and be done with it, and go on home. But hey, as far as the realm of weird and downright unsettling stories are concerned, Kevin's not the be-all end-all, because we've got James Wayne Wiles up next. Born in the idyllic year of 1953, which, uh, I'll let you do the math on that one. <laughs> Did you bring... Now, this guy's life was pretty interesting, but not in a good way. From being a trucker to ending up in a wheelchair due to a spine-crushing injury, there was already enough drama in his life. But hold on, there's more to this tale than what meets the eye. Now, if there's one word that sums up Wiles, it's provocateur. But don't picture a harmless dinner table agitator, cause it's not that simple. One Reddit user didn't hesitate in calling out this sicko. This guy, along with his father and brother, tormented his daughters. Now, let's zoom ahead a bit to the digital age. Wiles, no stranger to online mischief, decided to adopt the attention-grabbing moniker Hambubger. Yeah, this is the same Hambubger who went viral. But he wasn't up to ordinary online business, oh no. He set his sights on doing something crazy with someone he really shouldn't. And this was made evident as soon as he met the setup. What he did next was utterly disgusting. Oh yeah. Told you I'd be here. Wiles keeps his online promise. Did you bring my M&Ms? <laughs> You see, Wiles initially played the role of a virtual guardian of sorts in the chat room, but apparently he couldn't keep up the act for long, cause he started wooing the setup almost immediately. But what really sent shivers down my spine was his casual approach to it all. Not only did he confess that he was open to going all the way, but he also talked about putting his joystick to use as soon as they met. As for protection, well, he didn't give it a second thought, boldly declaring, who cares? That moral compass of his was pointing in the wrong direction. The c is too? No. Yeah. Thank you. Now, imagine this. After those steamy online exchanges, Wiles embarked on a two-hour drive from Jacksonville to the picturesque Flagler Beach. But here's the kicker. He's in a wheelchair, which, safe to say, didn't make the final leg of that journey any easier. Comes 53-year-old James Wiles, a retired truck driver from Jackson. Inside the house, he was met by the setup, and things seemed almost normal until she dropped the bombshell question. Did you bring M&Ms? And you have to see his response. Did you bring my M&Ms? <laughs> A sly grin rolled across his face as he patted his shirt pocket. Classic move, Wiles. Classic move. But when the setup here asked the ultimate question, the response was definitely shocking. Did you bring the c**ms too? No. Yeah. Thank you. No? Really? But here's where things took an even more bizarre turn. Wiles started getting a little too comfortable, engaging in some rather inappropriate behavior. Which seems to telegraph exactly what's on his mind. Now, that was hard to watch. Luckily, Chris swooped in in just the nick of time to put an end to this cringe fest. When confronted about his intentions, Wiles tried the oldest trick in the book. I just came to see her. Nice try, buddy, but Chris had the chat logs, and they didn't paint a pretty picture. Chris, being the pro that he is, dismantled Wiles' flimsy excuses with ease. I know what it says. There. We will be making all the time I'm there. Okay, cool. With my your Wiles then attempted to use his age as a shield, claiming he couldn't get excited anymore and that he was past that stage. Yeah, right. Obviously. Now, Wiles was 100% a pain to watch, but our next guy is gonna give him a run for his money. I'm talking about Edward Hollingsworth, also known as Twink Toilet. I mean, what even is that? Anyway, Edward, a 35-year-old with some rather peculiar tastes, went online. 
where he stumbled upon a site where someone was impersonating a different, inappropriate age. Of course, Edward decided to join the party. So, because I'm not there, the decoy invites a suspect to come up to the house. So, this dude went by that disgusting screen name I mentioned a second ago, Twink Toilet. Classy, right? And muddied the waters even more by introducing himself as Joe. Now, brace yourselves, because this is where it gets weirder. Edward isn't the type to beat around the bush. He said that you love to be by young boys. Is that true? Is that what you said? He even took it a step further, revealing his affinity for dirty boys who love getting freaky. TMI, my dude. TMI. To top it all off, Edward suggested that the other person should, uh, how do I even explain this? Use his mouth as a bathroom? I'll let your imagination do the rest. But either way, it was a cringe fest of the highest order. And the cherry on top? He decided to meet in person to put all that nasty stuff into practice. Unfortunately, Chris was busy confronting another legal eagle, Assistant District Attorney Lewis Conrad in a different county at the time and couldn't personally chat with Edward. But here's where it gets juicy. As soon as Edward arrived at the meetup spot, the person on the other side invited him in and promptly locked the door. Alarm bells, anyone? Like an idiot to know that you guys are setting up stings. Our man Edward here didn't quite follow instructions, attempting a futile sit-down protest. However, the police were having none of it, so they took matters into their own hands. Hey, hey, people say, well, you're thinking about I wasn't even thinking about that. After the dramatic takedown, Edward found himself at the local police station for a little Q&A session. And well, he tried his best to be sympathetic. My best friend's mom is dying of cancer. That's not a real excuse for it, but I wasn't in my right mind. Yeah. Definitely wasn't in his right mind. And just in case you weren't aware, he pointed out how good he was. Well, at least he's self aware. <sighs> I'm so well, I for, for, for doing this. As the interrogator read out the graphic chat log, our man kicked his lies into high gear. Again, fantasy takes over reality. Oh, the power of hindsight. And to add an even more absurd cherry on top, he asked the other person if they were a police officer. Like, seriously, buddy? Look around you. Edward wrapped up his excuse parade by admitting that getting into his car was the dumbest mistake of his life. Well, no kidding. Anyway, moving from one psycho to another, here comes the pizza guy. And I think you already know who I'm talking about. On October 3rd, 2015, Sokol embarked on a two and a half hour drive from Boston to Fairfield, armed with pizza, an orange juice container, and of course, some spirits. His plan? To stay with the person he'd been chatting with, all while her mother was away on business. What could possibly go wrong, right? As Jeff arrived in Fairfield, he was ready for a warm welcome. Alright. Okay. Sorry, I'm really nervous. Oh, you're gonna be hot? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. However, he was met with a cold shoulder and a swift move to increase the distance between them. It's clear that things weren't going according to his plan. Jeff then mentioned that he's met people online before, but never traveled this far to meet someone. I mean, I've met girls online, but I, I don't like come like this far to like meet someone. I don't know why. I'd be, like really cool to hang out with, and, you know, someone that I'd like to meet, and I. As they continued their awkward conversation, Jeff did something interesting. This isn't drugs, it's just a... Uh, yeah, no, by all means. Here, drink water. It's something that I take when I, before I eat. He casually took a pill from a medicine container, claiming he needed it before eating. Cryptic much? Once Chris interrupted his little party, Jeff insisted that Chris identify himself before casually brushing off the situation, claiming he was just hanging out. Now, what happened next is both bizarre and hilarious. Uh, go ahead, have a bite. Wow. 
I haven't done anything wrong. Jeff, eager to dig into his pizza, actually requested permission to do so after Chris tried to learn more about him. What even? Jeff assured Chris that he had no expectations whatsoever. But then, in a bizarre twist, he sighed and asked Chris this. Are you a dad? To meet a young girl. Are you, are you a dad? I will get to that in a minute. It's a comedy of errors, really. As Jeff munched on his pizza, he maintained his air of arrogance, insisting that he'd done nothing wrong since he only came to meet the person. Chris wasn't buying it and he threw in the question of whether Jeff brought protection, a marriage contract, with him. And Jeff's reaction was priceless. Some sort of marriage contract? <laughs> Cockiness and denial. That's a new combo to me. When Chris read aloud from their chat log, Jeff laughed it off, saying that chat is chat. However, Chris continued. You on Saturday. Well, since your mom isn't home, it's the best time to do it. He even claimed he treated everyone he'd met online this way, conveniently admitting how he asked for a hug on arrival. And then, the big reveal. When the cameras made their dramatic entrance, Jeff's denial train kept chugging along. During the police investigation, Jeff stuck to his story, claiming that all he wanted was a chat and to share some pizza. But here's where it gets even stranger. The investigator discovered that the pills Jeff brought were actually Cialis pills. And Jeff's explanation? He just happened to have them in his car. He maintained his innocence, even claiming that he was nervous during their online conversations. But since when is grooming okay? In a final act of arrogance, Jeff offered to take a lie detector test to prove his innocence, but the investigator wasn't having it, pointing out how proud Jeff sounded when talking about the marriage contract and his desire to have the mother's consent to go all the way without legal consequences. A viewer even commented about how Jeff seemed unaffected by the consequences. He was completely apathetic to the whole situation. Anyway, one thing is for sure, he definitely loves pizza. And now, it's time to delve into the unsettling story of Thomas Bodner, a man with a disturbing history of repeated offenses. Now, Bodner's no stranger to infamy. His dark tale started over two decades before he ever appeared on TCAP. It all began in Salem, Oregon, back in 1984, when he meddled with three siblings on multiple occasions. Fast forward to 1999, and he was arrested again, this time for connecting with someone online in a rather inappropriate manner. These are on their way. Well, come here. Raising serious questions like, can they be stopped? Bodner, using the screen name Casper in 909 wasted no time in putting his vile intentions into action. As Bodner drove to the Sting House, he continued his phone conversation with the setup, blissfully unaware of the coming storm. It's been a disturbing scene watching grown men. But here's where the plot thickens. As soon as Chris confronted Bodner, you won't believe what he did next. Wait, whoa, whoa. Bodner runs Sir? out the door as soon as he sees me. Yeah, he made a run for it. Now how stupid is that? The Riverside Police, fully aware of his history and the potential danger he posed, tackled him to the ground. The altercation left Bodner looking like this. What were you charged with? My brother got saved right there. And what did they find in his possession? A camera, a vibe, and a mysterious gel. Now, you can probably imagine what he came prepared for glad Chris and the cops stopped him in his tracks. And with that, who else do you think is fit for this list? I know for sure I didn't get them all. Drop those names in the comments. And before you head out, do me a favor and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this story was twisted, then don't forget to check out this next one right here. It's even crazier.